Hello everybody, this is Jas and welcome. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about a concept I have for Space Engineers once again. Uh, this time it's more a gameplay mechanic uh, I'm going to explain and that I'm really looking for in Space Engineers. And I'm going to talk about farming. Yes, because in Space Engineers so far, uh, we don't have to deal with food. But I remember a long, long time ago when I just bought the game, bought the game in a alpha release uh, there was no um, there was no power to deal with there was no oxygen there was no uh, and then I remember uh, medical bay was useless in the game and um, yeah the game make a crazy crazy long way to what it is right now and uh, I believe we just need one little step to make the survival uh, really complete so before I start explaining my concept uh, and how uh, the food system could work, uh, I would like to disengage uh, some arguments. So when I presented uh, my uh, Axera race, um, I would say it's not really a race, it's more an AI, um, an AI um, robotic kind of alien stuff. Um, I had to face two arguments and there is actually one argument I can see coming from a miles away. Um, the first argument uh, was uh, about the priority. Someone said to me, uh, God, dude, uh, the King Studio doesn't need to work on that. They need to work on this, on that. They need to fix this and they need to fix that. Uh, it's a suggestion what I'm doing here, okay? It's for the future. So it's not a, it's about what King Studio need to work in priority. It's just a suggestion for the future. I'm not saying when or how. I'm just saying for the future, okay? so. This argument is not really valid. Uh, the second argument I had is that someone said, uh, I don't see space engineer like this. I'm so used to do to play space engineers without having to deal with food um, make game mechanics. So I rather prefer having my space engineer that way. Well, okay, it's cool. And the cool thing with space engineers is that uh, when we create a new survival game, we can decide to custom our game how we want. If we don't like saber hounds, for example, or spiders, space spiders, for example, well, when we create a new survival game, we have the possibility to deactivate them. This is the cool thing. We can even deactivate oxygen if we don't not want to deal with that. So again, my ID is not um, is not a threat to your personal game experience. You see? And uh, the third argument I had, well, I never had this argument yet, but I can see it coming from miles away, is that some people may say, dude, this is not farming engineers. Well, yes, it's not farming engineers, but it's not mining engineers either. But yet, that's what we do half of the time. We mining in order to get our resources to build our stuff. I think it's part of the space engineer laws when we have to survive in space. So, so far so good, I think farming is also a very important point into the game. Okay, so let's start with the tier 1. As every important thing when we start a new survival game, we always start with very important elements in the game, such as medical bay, raffinery, assemblers, and in that case we're going to start with the food replicator. The food replicator is huge, heavy, suck a lot of energy, but the cool thing is that we can put some modules on the back just as the assembler and the raffinery. The downside with it is that this thing doesn't make a lot of food. Mean that depend the way you start the game, if you start on a rescue ship or you start with a base, it's going to change your gameplay and the way you're going to play your game. Yes, the gameplay of a world. If you have a base, your range of action is going to be reduced, meaning that you're always going to stay around your base because you need to go back in order to take your food, right? You see the idea behind? But if you have a mobile base, since this thing is AV, take a lot of energy, you're going to need a lot of uranium in order to have a, almost an infinite range of action. But you need to trade. That's what is very interesting with the, um, with the food uh, replicator. So the cool thing is, you could be really tempted to create a second food replicator, but you will think twice because this thing, again, suck a lot of energy. Would you like to do this trade or not? I let you guys think about it and all the possibility these things give to us, all the challenge and all the new game mechanic this has to offer. The tier two. 
So this is a bit spatial at this point. The gameplay is going to change a bit. The tier 2 is no more than just a farming area, a 3x3 for example, or a 4x4. Uh, it's trading the fact that it doesn't require too much component to build, but in exchange you're gonna need resources to make it work properly. Uh, it trades the amount of components with other resources, uh, such as water, seeds, rocks, and a direct contact with the sun. Do you see the, the difference between the full replicator and now the farming surface? Alright, so let me explain how it's going to work. Let's suppose you have just finished to build the farming area. So what should I do next? Well, you're gonna need to be sure that you have four important resources. First, you have a direct access with the sun. Two, that you have some ice that you can be melt as water, but what is the most important is that you have some ice, uh, that you have some rocks as uh, processed as gravel, and you have seeds. So rocks is not very complicated. We can get it pretty much everywhere on planets, on asteroids. Uh, then we can process this into gravel with raffinery, not much of a, a problem. Uh, water as ice, pretty easy as well to get. Then seeds is a bit more special. Seeds you need to go on planets in order to get those. Uh, the way to get it, I haven't think about it yet. Maybe you could just destroy a free and then it just drop some seed for you. Or you could just uh, mine the hurt in different biome in order to get different type of seeds. Same for the freeze as well. This is where there is a little emerging gameplay at this point. Rather than going yourself on the planet, which may cost a lot of energy to go and leave in the same time, you will send a drone to do the job. And as I said earlier, you're gonna need a direct access to the sun. This is where things get interesting, because between each space engineers, the way to module and create a greenhouse is going to be different to each other. This is where the real space engineers things is going to take place. The way you're going to build your greenhouse, the way you're gonna protect it, the way you're gonna take care of it and the way you're gonna get access to the sun by yourself. And let's not forget what is a greenhouse. A greenhouse is a friendly place for your crop, meaning that there is gravity, there is oxygen, there is an access to water. That's what you need to make a greenhouse working properly. You need to make a huge glass dome over your crop. This is where things get a little bit interesting because it's as well a weakness to your base. So now that you have access to the sun with a giant dome, the farm plot is going to use directly through the convoy system the gravel in your cargo. Then you could put your seed inside the farm plot through your selection and it's going to use automatically the water. Of course, let's keep in mind that it's a really cheap farm plot, meaning that the water that is going to be used is not going to be used at the optimal way. It's just going to be used with a clockwise system for example. So I'll let you guys imagine the difference and the trade between the food replicator and the farm plot. But let's be honest, the farm plot is not the magical solution against the food replicator. Because you're gonna need more than one to actually really compete the food replicator. If you have a lot of energy and want to be lazy, you know what to do. Take the first solution. But if you want to save energy, or make even more food with less energy, well, you have to take the farm plot and this is going to ask you a trade. So let's be honest guys, even if you have a very huge, huge dome, a huge greenhouse, you wouldn't want to throw away your food replicator. I mean, let's be honest, let's, let's think for a second that you have a friend that is very bad at piloting and just crashed the mining ship into the greenhouse for example or that eventually you forgot to put ammo inside your defenses and your turrets and that some asteroid went to crash into it well you will need an emergency plan and the full replicator is here to save the day sure this thing has a lot of resources you could try to recycle from it but it's a very important thing you want to keep if things goes really really wrong so that's pretty much it about the tier 2 uh, i'll let you guys think about it all the different trade days between the tier 1 and the tier 2 the the things they give to us and the things 
uh, where it's more problematic. One take a lot of energy, uh, create almost food from magic. The other one take way much more time and ask us to uh, do more space engineering things, get access to the sun. But the cool thing is it doesn't take much resources. So there is also something I forgot to mention, something pretty important about the seeds, for example. Let's suppose you have a bunch of farm plots and you use 10 seeds. At the end, after harvesting um, your crop, you will have 20 seeds out of it because it's pretty classic, it's pretty logical. Uh, when you plant one seed, you're going to have plenty of those other seeds to use for the future. The tier 3. So this is a little bit of a trade between the tier 1 and the tier 2. At this point, this farming area, tier 3, is entirely automated. Mean that you don't have to take care of anything. You just have to select the type of crops you want to see there. And the thing is going to do it automatically through the convoyer system. It's going to put, to take the soil, it's going to put the seeds, it's going to put the water when it's needed. But it, the difference is, is that this thing is going to require way more uh, components and as well way more energy. Such uh, what kind of components? I mean, maybe more computer components, maybe more displays, maybe more um, detector components, for example, in order to analyze the crops, know the amount of water it needs, how to treat it. And a good thing is, you don't need a direct sun with it because it's a greenhouse to itself. I mean that you can make a greenhouse inside a base or a greenhouse inside your mobile ship protected around uh, some armor, for example. Um, and that's pretty much it. And the cool thing is, uh, is that you can have different kind of shape for this kind of greenhouse, just as I can show you uh, on the video right now. So there we go. That's pretty much the idea I had for the farming system in Space Engineers. Uh, each tier has their own advantage and their disadvantage in the same way. Uh, and each of them are always have a trading behind. Uh, and still, as you can see, this is pretty much some space engineering thing here. So I have another special category I would like to talk about in relation with farming system. In space engineers, we can have almost infinite energy through solar panels. We just have to have a direct contact with the sun and we get energy in exchange. To have oxygen, we can use oxygen farm, again, using the sun. And I was thinking, since we have the farm system, maybe we need to answer a new needs. We're not going to spend our time mining all day long for ice, right? Well, these a good technique, uh, an actual te working technology, is uh, about using the oxygen in the air to extract the water through the oxygen. We could use sails, for example, in a planet, or we could use other systems that grab and extract the water from the oxygen. That's something we should think about. Uh, if we are on a planet, we could use them pretty easily in order to uh, humidify our crops, for example. And I think we should think about it because with the farm, we're going to need way more water than just making fuel out of it. Okay, so now there is one final little step. What I do with the raw crops I have from farming? Well, now you're going to need to process these crops into something. It's a bit the equivalent of using the raffinery to get some uh, ore, or ore ingots, I would say, and turn these ingots into something usable, all right? That's going to be the same for the food factory or the automated kitchen. In As the raffinery and the assembler, you can as well put two upgrades or one upgrades on the back to uh, be a little bit more finicky about uh, the food factory. So, how the food mechanic is going to work. In order to make things very simple for the game mechanic, I was thinking that what matter is the is not the color, is not the type, it's just the fact that we have different kind of crops, alright? Let's say for example, I go to I goes to the planet, I decide to mine one biome, I've got seed out of it, and it's blue seed. Blue seed is going to give me blue crops. And, and that's all I've got, blue crops. 
So in the food factory, the food factory is going to say, okay, you have only one type of crops inside. And with that, you can make only energy bar or cereals to be exact. And you know that we need a lot of cereals in order to fill our belly, right? It's pretty easy to make very quickly, but we need a lot of them. So let's say this time I've decided to mine another biome and I got red crops now on my base. So now the food factory see that I have two different types of crops and it's going to say, okay, you can still making cereals if you want, but you can also make this kind of dishes, etc, etc, etc. And we can go further and further. And this time, every time we have more crops, more different type of crops, and more we're going to make different type of dishes. Some are going to give us, uh, I don't know, uh, is going to feel our health, for example, if we are hurt. Uh, some are going to feel our belly fully, for example. And also, it depends on the type of, uh, of dishes you make, it's going to take more or less time to make. Just like construction component, for example. Just make the difference between the iron plate and construction components. It takes quite different times to make them. But you see, again, there is different possibilities, different kind of trade. And I'll let you guys imagine how far this system can go. So there we go guys, that's all I've got uh, as ID for the food mechanic for Space Engineers. I hope you guys enjoy and I hope uh, all the ID I came with are uh, going to um, help you guys to think about maybe even better ID that I've got. Uh, I really believe that if this food system came into the game, this is going to really change our vision uh, in terms of creating base, in terms of creating spaceship self sustaining spaceship, for example, um, it's going, we're going finally to use way more energy than we have. Uh, and in the same time, it's going to put a real sense to what we call expedition. We're not going to uh, leave our base without having a proper checklist. We're going to be like, okay, I have some energy bar with me because I'm just going to mine. I have some oxygen bottle with me. Okay, I'm check. Let's go. Or if you're going for a more deeper exploration you're going to be like okay i have uh, this amount of, of food supplies i have this amount of oxygen bottle uh, okay i'm set to go you know these kind of things and i really believe it's going to give us a more emission into the space engineers uh, world uh, but uh, yeah i'll let you guys think about it i think it's going to work for everyone in everyone's brain and maybe and maybe I do hope to see this idea come through in Space Engineers. So anyway guys, I would like to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, see ya.